Hey there, I'm Nick with MarkForge. And today, we're gonna to be unboxing and setting up a MarkForge Desktop Series Composite 3D Printer. Our Desktop Series includes the Onyx 1, Onyx Pro, and Mark II 3D printers. So if you're looking to set up and install one of those today, you've come to the right place. This video is intended as a supplement to your Desktop Series user guide, which can be found on our support website. You can always find the latest information, tutorials, and maintenance info there at support.markforge.com. Please take care when unboxing and assembling your printer. Your desktop series printer is shipped in an overpack box alongside your dry box and power cord. The printer is heavy and you may require two people to lift and move it for setup. To make the unboxing process easier, you'll need a sharp tool like a box cutter, as well as a pair of wire cutters or similar clippers. We'll start by carefully opening the printer box, removing the packing foam and the safety booklet on top of the printer, and then finally lifting the printer out of the box and placing it on a sturdy work surface. Make sure to review the safety instructions booklet prior to continuing with the unboxing process. Your printer comes wrapped in a protective plastic bag, which you can remove and discard. Remove the getting started card from the visor and set it aside. You'll need the card later to set up your agar organization and register your printer to it. Next, remove and discard the plastic film and any remaining tape or foam from the printer visor. Peel the protective film off of the printer touchscreen as well. Lift the printer visor and gently remove the accessory kit box from the printer. Remove and discard the plastic wrap from the accessory kit as well. Using wire cutters or a similar clipper, carefully remove the two zip ties which are connecting the print head and the print bed stage. Let's unbox the accessory kit to continue. Inside, you'll find your print bed protected in bubble wrap, an accessory bag with a number of tools, accessories, and maintenance parts, a print bed scraper, and if you have a printer capable of continuous fiber reinforcement, a number of continuous fiber spools compatible with your printer. Inside the accessory bag, you'll find a number of tools, cables, accessories like your Wi-Fi antenna, and a number of spare parts for maintenance like extra nozzles. Next, we're going to connect a networking adapter to the back of the printer, either via ethernet cable or Wi-Fi antenna. If you decide to use ethernet, simply plug an internet connected ethernet cable into the ethernet port. For Wi-Fi connectivity, remove the protective cover from the SMA jack on the back of the printer, and then install the Wi-Fi antenna. Plug the power cord into the back of the printer, and the other end into an outlet. Don't turn the printer on just yet, however. Next, we're going to install the print bed. Gently press down with two fingers near the center of the print bed stage until it lowers down to the bottom of the printer. This is safe to do so when the printer is not in the middle of a print job. Take the print bed out of the bubble wrap and orient it with the notches on the print bed facing the back of the printer. Line up the notches with the two linear bearings in the back of the printer and gently deposit the print bed on the stage. Make sure there's no remaining protective packaging left on the printer and then turn your printer on with the on off switch next to the power cord. Wait for it to power up. Initial startup can take several minutes, so wait until you see the home screen appear and start reading room temperature before you continue. The first thing we want to do after power up is connect the printer to the internet. To do so, touch the networking icon from the top bar and select the networking option you installed earlier. If you chose Wi-Fi, you'll need to select a network from the drop-down menu and enter the network password. Give the printer some time to establish a connection. You'll know it's successfully connected when you see the green check mark. After your printer connects to the internet, you may notice a blue Update Available bar on the bottom of your screen. Click on it to navigate to the Update menu and choose Cloud Update to download and install the update over the internet. We regularly push new firmware versions with new features, security updates, and more, so you should keep your printer updated to the latest firmware for the best experience. To update firmware via USB, please see Updating Firmware in the Desktop Printer User Guide. Next, we need to level the print bed and calibrate the fiber nozzle height. To get started, go to the printer touchscreen and select the menu icon in the top right of the home screen. From there, select Bed Level and then Shim Bed Level to start the bed level utility. The utility will start by homing the printhead and then ask you to navigate through a few informational screens. Next, the printer will move the printhead over the first adjustment point. You'll use the brass shim labeled plastic shim to monitor the gap between the plastic nozzle and the print bed as you adjust the bed height with the thumb screw underneath the print bed stage. The plastic nozzle is the one located closer to the back of the printer. The proper gap distance will allow you to still easily move the shim back and forth, but you should be able to feel slight resistance on the shim. Once you're done adjusting the bed height at that point, the utility will take you through leveling the bed to the plastic nozzle at two other points. Next, the utility will help you adjust the fiber nozzle height. 
Here, you'll need the brass shim labeled fiber shim and the 2.5 millimeter hex key. The position of the fiber nozzle is determined by its adjustment screw on top of the printhead. Tighten the screw by turning it clockwise to lower the nozzle closer to the bed, or loosen it to raise the nozzle. Adjust the nozzle until you can also feel slight resistance on the shim between the fiber nozzle and the bed, with best practice to stop at just a little less resistance than for the plastic nozzle. Once you're satisfied with the fiber nozzle height, you can cancel out of the utility. After we load a plastic filament, you can go back and run the fiber nozzle height routine that the utility suggests. Next, we'll need to attach the printer's dry box before we can load our plastic filament. First, remove the dry box from its packaging. The dry box is shipped with a spool of onyx and a spool spindle assembly inside it. Remove both from the dry box before continuing. Insert one end of the plastic feed tube from the accessory bag into the adapter on the side of the dry box. Then feed the other end through the port on the back of the printer and up to the adapter on the plastic extruder. Don't connect the other end to the extruder just yet. We'll do that after loading plastic filament into the extruder. Place the dry box behind the printer, making sure the plastic feed tube has a smooth path into the printer without sharp bends or kinks. Navigate to the printer menu again and select materials, then load plastic to start the plastic loading utility. From here, we'll select meter load to provide the printer an estimate of material remaining choose onyx, and then full spool, and the printer will begin heating up the plastic nozzle. While the printer heats up, open up a spool of onyx and place the desiccants inside the bag into the dry box. You should always discard any used desiccants from the dry box and only use the new ones anytime you load a new spool of material. Remove the magnetic cap from the spool spindle, insert the spindle through the spool barrel, and replace the cap on the other side. Place the spool and spindle assembly into the dry box with the filament arranged so as to pass over the top of the spool before it enters the feed tube adapter. Release the end of the filament from the spool flange and break off a few inches before gently threading it through the feed tube until one to two inches of filament exits the feed tube near the extruder. Go back to the touchscreen and wait for the heating process to finish. When the nozzle is up to temp, select next and then feed the end of the filament into the plastic extruder. You may need to straighten out the filament end a little to help it load into the extruder. Once the filament is feeding through the plastic Bowden tube, you can connect the feed tube to the plastic extruder adapter. When plastic begins to exit the nozzle, you can select stop and then cool down on the touchscreen to stop the loading process, cool down the nozzles, and exit the utility. Finally, go back to the dry box, close the lid, and ensure both latches are securely engaged. If you have a printer that's capable of printing continuous fiber reinforcement, you'll also need to load a spool of continuous fiber filament. To do so, open up a fiber spool bag. I'll choose a spool of carbon fiber here. Release the taped end of the filament spool and unspool about two to three feet of material while maintaining control over the end. Reapply the tape to the filament and the front flange of the spool and then detach the magnetic spindle cap from the fiber spool post inside the rear left side of the printer. Place the spool on the post so that it'll rotate clockwise as fiber is extruded. Thread the filament through the brass cone at the end of the fiber feed tube until it reaches the fiber extruder. On the printer touchscreen, Navigate to the menu and select Materials, then Load Fiber, and choose Meter Load to provide the printer an estimate of material remaining. Select the fiber type that you've chosen to load and the spool size. The fiber extruder will then begin the loading routine. You may need to advance the fiber further into the feed tube to get it to catch in the extruder. Once the fiber begins to be pulled into the feed tube, release the tape holding it to the spool and maintain tension on the filament with your finger until the excess is loaded into the printer. When fiber begins to exit the nozzle, select Cut on the touchscreen to cut the fiber, and then select Done to end the loading routine. And that's it. Our Mark II is set up and ready to print. If you have any more questions or need more assistance with your printer, you can always head over to our support website at support.markforge.com. Happy printing!